Okay guys, so hopefully you have your Pro Tools session brought up right now. Now if you don't have a Pro Tools session actually brought up right now, do not worry about it. Take plenty of notes and apply this information to your next session. Alright, so what we're going to be talking about right now are some EQ fundamentals. Okay, some things that you actually need to know uh, before you begin mixing things down and working with equalization. Uh, we're going to actually work with a, uh, a vocal track and EQ that, but I first want to kind of set some guidelines and just some additional information that you're going to need to know about EQing because EQing is one thing that is definitely uh, subjective. You know, everyone's going to have their different opinions, and I'll, you know, I'm going to definitely share my best opinions on how to EQ. And one of the first things that I know that you actually really need to know is what instrument that you are actually EQing because uh, each instrument that you EQ has a different range of frequency. Uh, for example, since we're going to be doing a vocal track, uh, we're going to have to know exactly what are the frequency limitations of a human voice. Uh, now in this case, it's going to be between 80 hertz and 1100 hertz, okay? Uh, that's actually the range of human voice. You know, that's as, as low as it can get, which is 80 hertz, and as high as it can get, uh, which is 1100 hertz. Now, I know in particular uh, that I'm a tenor. Uh, which means that my frequency range uh, on, let's say, a piano reaches from uh, C3 to C5. It only covers a few octaves. And, I, you know, you have to know that there's, you know, specific frequencies within, you know, that, that range. Okay? So knowing that, this is going to actually help me EQ my voice. Now, so you really need to know, you know, the instrument and the frequency range uh, before you start, you know, EQing anything. Uh, so that's, I guess, the first rule, okay? Now, once you know that, it's going to set the baseline and a guideline to how to EQ that particular instrument. So let's go ahead and uh, start this process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mix window. I'm going to hit Control uh, plus or equals. Actually, let me go ahead and select that. Okay, here we are. So let's go ahead and look at my my track right here and you might remember this track from earlier uh, probably the weeks before it's uh, that track where I say hey and yeah so we're just gonna go ahead and just use that okay and then what I'm gonna want to do right here is I'm gonna select a new plugin uh, and go to EQ and uh, I mean there's a lot of different options here for the type of EQ that you could use I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with a, a three band EQ because I already know that uh, since we're working with the vocal, we don't need to work with the four or seven band EQ. Uh, we actually only need to work with a smaller EQ, uh, seeing that uh, the, the range of, of frequency that a voice could actually make is only around here. You know, so actually, you know what, let me go ahead and go to a seven, just to kind of show you guys uh, what I mean, I guess, in a, in a bigger aspect. Okay, so right now we're actually looking at a 7-band EQ, but I know that my voice, it's really, you know, impossible for me to, or for really anyone, to reach uh, beyond this point, around this point right here, where it's 80, uh, or, pardon me, uh, around here where it's uh, too, too low for a human to actually make that sound and over here at 20 at 20k and even you know this whole frequency range right here it's too high uh, so I know that I'm not going to really need to go use let's say like the high frequency or the uh, low frequency really I know I'm going to be really working with these three options right here okay uh, so that's the first thing that you need to know now when you're working with EQ there's different parts of an EQ that you need to actually understand as well uh, each EQ will have these three things. Uh, so the first thing what you want to do is uh, know exactly which EQs you're going to use. I know I'm going to use these three. I'm going to use the uh, low mid filter, the mil mid filter, and the high mid filter. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust these gains just ever so slightly so you can see uh, them, you know, kind of being used. So I'm going to probably bring everything around to that amount. 2.2 uh, decibels around there. There. Okay? So now you can see uh, that this part of the EQ, which is the gain, is actually uh, being used. So this is the gain part, 
uh, the gain right here will actually determine how much of this uh, uh, filter is actually going to be used. Okay. Uh, the next thing that you need to know is uh, this right here, which is called the Q. Now, what the Q is, it actually allows you to under uh, to manipulate that frequency range, like how much of that frequency range are you going to be in control of? Okay, so you see this orange part, it's from, you know, it looks like, you know, around about uh, 100, uh, 100 hertz to close to around 500 hertz. Okay? Uh, so, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, move this knob right here so you can see how much of it now. See how it went from, uh, you know, 100 hertz to around close to uh, 500 hertz. And now uh, it's, you know, it's marginally less. Uh, so you can see how the Q works. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to where it was. Okay. Uh, just so that you understand uh, that what, what the Q is. Now, right, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of work with is something called a frequency. And what the frequency does, it allows you to go ahead and sweep uh, this band right here to uh, a frequency which is most I guess pleasurable to the ear and to the mix okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this around so that you can see that see that happening okay I'm gonna bring it back to close where to where it was so it's kinda of hard to get it exactly where it was uh, so I'll just kinda of leave it right there now the next thing that you should know about equalization is that I would say this is probably one of the most important things to understand about equalization is that for example if you have a vocal that's going on and you're saying oh man uh, this vocal sounds good but there's just not enough low frequency on this track uh, I guess what I need to do is uh, you know you know boost up the uh, uh, the low frequency so I get a bit more uh, so that I could hear that vocal the way I want it that's actually not really the, the best way of doing that. Uh, because and what ends up happening is, let's say you have the track uh, playing and it's on a, you know, you sold the track and you're like, wow, okay, that really improved the way uh, that vocal sounds. It sounds a lot more bassier. And then you listen to it in the entire mix once you unsold that track and you're listening to all the tracks put together and all of a sudden you've pretty much just thrown a monkey wrench in the whole <laughs> The whole track and now you have a, a muddiness and it's just covering over other tracks and this will really happen a lot you'll notice this happen a lot with low frequency things like let's say if you have a bass guitar and a snare not a snare pardon me you have a bass guitar and a kick drum uh, playing and you boost up let's say the uh, bass guitar well all of a sudden you can you can either not even hear that uh, kick drum anymore or you barely hear it and uh, that's because you boosted this so much that um, that frequency range is now covered, you know, and um, the thing is with uh, with frequencies is that you have to think about it like uh, open space, you know, the more uh, that you see how this, uh, this cue is, how long it is, essentially this is not only affecting the one track that you're actually mixing, it's actually uh, affecting all the other tracks and it's hogging up all that space and that's not good. Uh, so what you want to do is rather than boost frequencies, and you have that that uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that that vocal sounds, uh, for example, more bassier. What you want to do is you might want to go ahead and cut other frequencies that are not allowing the bass frequencies to stand out. So you will go ahead and uh, you know cut out some of the mid and maybe cut out a little bit of that uh, high uh, uh, high frequency as well, or, or the high mid frequency, uh, to go ahead and showcase your your uh, your bass. So um, let's say you know you're right here at 2.2, and um, you're like, oh man, I still can't hear that bass. Well, maybe you want to go ahead and cut this. You see what that does? Now that makes this more prominent. Okay, and you could hear that a little bit more, and that's probably what you want to do. And then from there, you would uh, go ahead and unsole your track, and then you would go ahead and uh, listen. You'll say, hey, you know what? It didn't disturb any of the other uh, tracks as part of this, uh, you know, change that I made. So that's what you really want to do. So let's go ahead and uh, put these ideas or these fundamentals to use right now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, play the vocal track. You'll hear it uh, and then uh, I'll just go ahead and begin, uh, begin kind of just manipulating a little bit so that you guys can get a better understanding of how to do this, okay? Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, begin cutting and boosting frequencies right now. 
so what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is I already know that I'm not going to need this low uh, filter, this low pass filter uh, right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and I'll turn that off. I don't believe I'll need this high uh, filter either. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And now what we're left with is the low mid filter, the mid filter, and the high mid filter. Okay. Uh, so I kind of feel like my voice is, uh, has too much high frequency in it. Uh, so what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to cut a little bit of the high out so that the low uh, in my voice kind of stands out. But of course, I'm going to boost it just a tad uh, so that we can kind of tell the difference uh, between, uh, I guess, uh, both takes. So let's go ahead and um, hear this track. <laughs> Actually, let me go ahead and uh, solo uh, the vocal. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's how it sounds like. It's kind of uh, a, a little bit more on that high frequency. I kind of, I, I kind of feel as I listen to it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin uh, cutting some of this uh, low out or high frequency out. Go the opposite direction. Okay. Um. Right, right on here. Leave. I'll go ahead and do the same. Actually, I'm going to sweep this over a little bit. Probably going to change the cue on this too. Down there. Just so that each uh, part of this frequency that I'm going to be manipulating has its own space, you know? I'll probably do around the same for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the gain down just a little bit. Sweep that around, and I'll boost up the low just a tad, a couple, couple decibels, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Hear how it sounds. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 hey, hey. Okay, so I kind of feel like I, I did actually gain a little bit more um, low to my voice. I'm actually going to bring this down just a touch. Actually, let me boost it up just a little bit so it's a little bit more noticeable. Uh, and I'm going to take this down a little bit so, again, it's a little bit more noticeable. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead. This down a little bit. Try it again. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah, you can hey, definitely hear hey, the low now. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. Going to bypass it. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Uh, so let me go ahead and unsolo track, and we'll hear how it sounds in the mix. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll slowly adjust it. Another thing we want to keep in mind, too, is the output. Uh, as you begin cutting and, and, and boosting frequencies, obviously the output's going to get a little bit higher. So always keep that in mind and uh, adjust your output accordingly so that this doesn't turn red, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a listen. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. This sounds thinner? Yeah, yeah, In my opinion, yeah, it sounds thinner. Yeah, 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 and this sounds yeah, a little bit more fuller. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. 
Okay, and you know what? This is you know pretty much the fundamentals behind EQing. Now every single instrument's uh, you know a little bit different, and every scenario is a bit different too. Because the more tracks that are actually are part of that song, uh, the more you're going to have to be car careful with cutting and boosting frequencies. You know, you don't definitely don't want to have uh, interfering uh, frequencies, kind of like the example I brought a little bit earlier with the uh, the kick drum and uh, let's say like a bass instrument, like a bass guitar. If you're really, uh, you know, boosting frequencies on one, basically you're taking away uh, frequencies on the other uh, track that's around that same low frequency range. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. Uh, but of course, experiment, have fun, and good luck. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finance is a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.